When we're connecting to remote servers, it's important to make sure our connection is secure, but it can be really annoying to have to type in our passwords over and over again. Thankfully, we have a whole suite of tools that will help us access a remote terminal and move files securely. In this video, we'll discuss how to connect to our Unix-based servers using a secure shell connection without passwords. Hello developers and welcome to PHP Developers TV, your home for everything you need to know to be a knowledgeable PHP developer. I'm your host, Scott Keck Warren. What is the Secure Shell? The Secure Shell, or SSH for short, is a network protocol that gives us a way to securely access our computer over an unsecured network. It uses a series of encryption protocols to make sure our traffic can't be intercepted by a third party and viewed. In the days before SSH was widely used, we would have to use a protocol like Telnet or FTP, which transmitted all of our data without encryption. There's absolutely no way we should be using them anymore, and most systems won't even allow us to install them. SSH can also refer to a suite of command line utilities that implement the SSH protocol in order to provide secure communications for various tasks. For example, the SSH command is used to provide a secure terminal, and the SCP command is used to securely copy a file from one computer to another. SSH allows us to authenticate ourselves using a password or using a public-private key exchange. The password authentication will allow us to connect, but we will need to remember our unique password for each server, because we're not reusing them, right? The public-private key exchange option allows us to set a single password to lock our private key, and then authenticate on systems that have our public key. If the computer we're using to connect to the remote computer is a Unix-based system like Linux or Mac OS, there's a really good chance that the SSH commands have already been installed by our system administrator. The newer versions of Windows have them built in as well, but we can also use third-party tools like PuTTY and WinSCP, connecting to a remote host. Let's go through a couple of examples on how to use the SSH command. For our first example, let's use the SSH command to connect from one Linux computer to another Linux computer. The basic syntax for this is SSH space username at hostname. In this example, we're going to use SSH Scott at hostname.com. When we enter this into our terminal and hit enter, we'll receive a message like the following. This is letting us know that the public key that was presented to us from the remote computer isn't known to our computer. This is generally okay because we've never connected to this remote computer before. If we're concerned, we can use the fingerprint to verify it's correct, but we'll have to contact the administrator of the server to do that. In order to continue, we'll need to enter yes. After we do this, we'll receive a message that the fingerprint was added to the list of known hosts. This adds the public key of the server as an entry into the known hosts file inside the SSH directory of our home directory. This way, the next time that we connect to this server, it will know that we can trust it. If the key changes, we'll receive a message informing us of the change. Key changes generally happen if the remote computer is upgraded or replaced, but it can also be an indication that a man-in-the-middle attack is happening. Now we just need to enter our password for the remote system and we'll have access. Now let's copy a file to the remote system. This is done using the scp command, and will look like the following. As an example, if we need to copy a file named passwords to our remote system's home directory, we can type the following. After we've entered our password, the file will be uploaded and will be done. Now without passwords. All of those password prompts were a little annoying, and because we're using complex passwords for our account, it's really error prompt. To make our lives a little bit easier, we're going to set up our connection, so we use public key cryptography to authenticate ourselves. The first step is to run SSH keygen on our local computer. This will create a public key pair for us to use. It's best to accept the defaults because everything will be looking for the files we need in the default location. We can override this behavior, but it can be a bit of a pain. When prompted for a password, we can hit the enter for no password or enter a password. We'll be prompted for this password anytime we attempt to use our private key, so we recommend only setting a password if the private key will be stored on a shared computer and an extra layer of security is needed. It will already be inside of a folder that can't be read by anyone else. Now this process creates two files. The first is the private key, which is stored inside of our home directory's SSH folder named id underscore rsa. As it's a private key, we need to do our best to make sure it stays private. The second is the public key, stored in the same directory, but called id underscore rsa dot pub. We can be a lot less concerned about this file, but it's still important to make sure that we have a backup. In order to get our public key onto the server, we need to run ssh-copy-id with the username and host that we want to copy the data to. 
When we do this, we'll get output similar to what's on screen. This output is telling us that our public key was installed onto the remote server. Now, whenever we log into the server using SSH, we won't be prompted for the password. It'll be the same for SCP and any of the other commands that use the SSH protocol without SSH copy ID. Most modern systems have the SSH copy ID command installed by default. But if we run into a situation where it's not installed, we can perform the same steps manually that it automates. To do this, we just need to copy the contents of our id underscore rsa.pub file from our local computer and add it to the SSH authorized key file on the remote computer. We could do this manually, or we could just create a single command line for us to do it. And that's what we're going to do. The command is listed on screen, but if you want to check inside the comments, you'll see it there as well. Troubleshooting. It's possible, if unlikely, that a system administrator may have disabled public key cryptography. So if it doesn't work after we try this, we can check the methods the SSH server supports by running the SSH command with a dash V argument. This will give us a dump of information about the connection, but the line that we're looking for contains the words authentications that can continue. If public key is in that line, then it's supported. What you need to know. The SSH protocol allows us to make secure connections. The SSH command allows us to use a remote terminal. The SCP command copies a file. We can use public key cryptography to make our lives a little bit easier. As always, thank you for watching our video. Please make sure to subscribe, comment, and like as it does help others find us. Do you want to help support our channel? You can do so by joining us on Patreon. We would really love it, and we'll include your name in our list of supporters in each video. This is Scott Keck Warren for PHP Developers TV, signing off and reminding you to keep coding.